Welcome to Epicenter, the show which talks about technologies, projects and people driving decentralization and the blockchain revolution. I am Friedrich Ernst and I'm here with a whole host of people live from DEF CON 2020. My guests today are Nick Johnson from ENS, Annette Rollicover from Nethermine, David Hoffman from Bankless and Joseph Schweitzer from the Ethereum Foundation. And we will talk about uh, DEF CON 2022, which is... Um, just finishing up today. Um, but before we do that, um, let me tell you about our sponsor this week. <clears throat> our sponsor this week is Omni. Omni is your new favorite multi-chain mobile wallet that puts the power of Web3 at your fingertips. In just three taps, you can stake and manage your assets over 22 built-in protocols, including all major EVMs, Layer 2s, and non-EVMs like Cosmos, Solana, Nia, and more. Omni abstracts away all complexity while being fully self-custodial, meaning getting yield on your crypto has never been this easy and secure. Omni also has a multi-chain NFT support, so you can view all of your NFTs in one place and you can flex your cleaners NFT by setting it as your app background. Don't forget to check out the explore section in the app for your daily fix of the hottest dApps, yields and news across chains. On September 7, Omni upgraded its app to provide you with even more functionality. Um, and to highlight their transformation, they renamed from Stake Wallet to Omni. Um, and if you want to get in on that now, join thousands of users on this next generation wallet by downloading it today on iOS or Android at omni.app. And on another note, we as Epicenter are hiring we are looking for a community manager to help grow our audience and take Epicenter to the next level. If you are passionate about crypto and creating great content, we want to hear from you. Full details can be um, found in the link on the show notes. Um, and please also share with anyone who you think might be a great fit for this. And without further delay, let's go to the panel. Hi, this is Friederike um, coming to you from Bogota on the fourth and final day of DEF CON, DEF CON 6, that is. I am here with uh, Joseph from the Ethereum Foundation, Annette from Nethermind, Nick from ENS, and David from Bankless. Cool. Thank you guys for joining. This has uh, been a pleasure. Maybe let's talk the big picture first. How have you been enjoying the conference? Joseph, as the person who's... Um, who's been wearing the hat of organizing this, I'll, I'll give you dips on the answer. Uh, I would say I'm very glad to see how uh, uh, much the focus has been on the substance. Um, as an organizer, it's, uh, 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 first of all, giant shout out to Skyler Weaver and the whole DevCon team, who thanks to uh, 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 multiple years of COVID, uh, sat through three years of organizing and trying to improve from one year to uh, uh, the next to the next to the next. Um, but conferences, I think, tend to break down on lines of either hype or substance. And as something grows larger, you know, from where it was at 50 people in 2014 to over 6,000, it's hard to hold on to uh, providing value to an ecosystem at a conference. So when you see lines outside of uh, 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 every talk hall and side stage um, waiting to get into the next sessions rather than lines for the next party, although I'm sure those were there too, it's uh, um, it's always heartening to see that people are making productive uh, uh, movement when in, uh, on Ethereum ecosystem growth. I'm very happy actually uh, that DevCon turned out very educational. I was not expecting it to be like this very much like builder focused and very much like technical talks. I'm definitely impressed by all the high level and like high educational talks by like. Uh, whether that's like s such a so many talks on like zk evm and mev which i am really impressed like how the technology grew up since like defcon in osaka when uh, we've been like the topics were like a little bit um less technical and um now as that uh, is like the whole blockchain and the research and all that progress so much so it's very uh very cool to see like how the talks are being like different and how much more technical and even like almost academia, academic alike talks uh, were on the schedule as well. And it's very cool that those talks were even full and people enjoy these, uh, not even, not only the like low level or like the social talks as well. Yeah, I've been having a great time. There's so many talks that I haven't made it to, 
because I keep running into people in the halls and, and people I haven't met in three plus years and talking to them and catching up, which I kind of view as the right way to do a conference almost because the talks are recorded, the people aren't. Um, and so, you know, it's been great. And I've also been super impressed with how well organized everything is, how there's a great mix of technical talks and like breakout spaces and workshops and panels. And it's, you know, there's opportunities to like go somewhere and decompress a bit. There's opportunities to find somewhere quiet to chat with people. Um, it's been really good. So this is actually my, my first DevCon. And the thing that's really sticking out to me the most is that if you call DevCon a tech conference, you're kind of missing it. Um, and there's a reason why we uh, DevCon goes to all of these weird cities rather than just like San Francisco or New York. Uh, we're in we're in Bogota, Colombia, uh, and I think that's a part because Ethereum is one part technology, but also one part culture. Uh, and so we have to find these different communities all around the world that uh, you wouldn't otherwise you know find in the the typical conference city like New York or San Francisco. And uh, because Ethereum is a social technology, and so DevCon is a social conference. Uh, and so it's uh, just not about the tech. It's all about just the ways that Ethereum and local cultures all around the world integrate with each other. Uh, and we've just been having a, a fantastic time uh, connecting with everyone that hasn't been able to connect in the last few years because DEF CON hasn't happened since 2019. Uh, and so just seeing the soul and the spirit kind of emerge out of this conference has been just a fantastic thing to observe. I would definitely second that. I know the Ethereum Foundation has come under a lot of flack for um, the choice of location. Uh, I, I know um, a couple of people who deliberately didn't come because they had security concerns and so on. But um, I think um, it's been a fantastic choice of location in terms of accessibility. Um, I mean, in South America, right? So basically everything's far away from where most people are in South America, but Bogota's by, uh, by quite a stretch. Um, one of the more accessible cities. Um, the vibe is fantastic. So I think uh, the, the Latin American community has been strong from the get go. And um, usually it's them making the 13 hour flights, except for Nick. Nick's always on 13 hour flights, but <laughs> everyone else is uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, gets to do this on their home turf. Uh, and this is never the case for South Americans. So I think this, this has been um, a fantastic signal. I am low-key obsessed with the venue. I think this is the best venue yet. I love the venue. Basically, you see how many people there are, but it's still, um, it, it's, it, it, it doesn't feel crowded because I think the way they've done this architecturally with um, like this really high open space in the middle, absolutely fantastic. And uh, I love the bathrooms. I know that this is a really weird thing to compliment, but I, uh, I absolutely love the bathrooms. <laughs> On, this is the first time that any Epicenter listener will have heard bathroom-related comments <laughs> in the 400-some-odd episode history of Epicenter. Um, so I can lend a little bit of context to this because there's a question about um, you know, what the Ethereum ecosystem is, what, um, what, it, you know, what it could be, could be, should be. Um, coming off of, also coming off of the last DevCon, there are these funny things about it where uh, it's it's known and almost revered for the things that go wrong. Uh, you know, that's, uh, 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 and this time we tried to go, I, ideology was probably uh, uh, up there, tied at a number one with um, making sure that things just work. So, you know, was there, uh, 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 was there catering? Was it accessible from the airport? Was it accessible to a downtown and to a city? Could people get around the city fairly easily? But skipping over the, the venue things for the most part, the, um, the ecosystem is big. Ethereum, as uh, David often says, is, is it's people all the way down. And um, but who are those people? So we have this very large community in, say, Berlin or in Denver or San Francisco or New York and in Buenos Aires. And uh, 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 what will make it all relatively unstoppable, unkillable, and whatever else um, is these communities continuing to grow and pop up and create new supercells. Kind of everywhere and if we only hit where they uh, uh, have already existed then um, we fail to kind of foster that growth now there's a line right uh, uh, we're in bogota and that means that there are a lot of people from venezuela that can come over be at the conference in a way that they would have never been able to experience uh, 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 elsewhere but of course we can't cross that line and go over there because of political concern right so 
where can you get where you might want to, where can you go where you might want to create impact and further growth? Because regionally it's in an area that might be a great fit. Um, you know, we've seen there's ETH Medellin next week and Panama the week after and Quito was last week. And uh, uh, so you can maybe start to create a supercell in the northern half of South America, just like there is one in in uh, uh, eight hours south by plane in uh, uh, Buenos Aires and six hours north by plane in New York City. And, and once you kind of have people building from everywhere and for everywhere, it really starts to become a, the worldwide community that we want it to be. So I hope that that's something that comes from this. There's also, and then I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet, but there's something to be said for bringing all of these people that might have had misconceptions and preconceptions about South America and seeing how that's changed in a four day span. Uh, you referenced people who I'm coming with security or, or something, you know, or, or not going at all. And I, I've been around people who in the first day said, I'm not okay leaving this hotel, but by day two, they're at the street markets. And by day, day four, they kind of like get to know a neighborhood and it's, it's quite nice. And then I think somebody said to me, I wouldn't have ever come to this region, let alone the city, if the event didn't bring me here and I'm used to it being in places that I know. So I hope that's something that we can learn from. Actually, what you just said, I feel like that's, why conferences are being even organized or hosted like i feel like that like the whole ethereum community is like a full of digital nomads that basically just travel from a conference to a conference and it just allows us to explore the world and opens up uh possibilities and uh, options to like where to travel or like visit the new places get to know new cultures and I love the vibrance of the Latin American community, especially as they've been like getting ready for this for like two years, three years, um, and seeing the progress and the energy of the Latin American community and like the Spanish people uh, at DEF CON, it's very interesting. And especially like the people that are around or like translating notes or like, you know, even like talking to you Spanish um, or like doing a bunch of like Spanish programs. Um, I love that, um, especially as Spanish um, language in general. Uh, so many people speak in Spanish. Um, so it's kind of cool to see uh, Ethereum itself like transforming into like a more of a bilingual, 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 yeah, uh, bilingual, um, like a world where people don't need to know only English in order to navigate through the Web3 ecosystem, but also the Spanish um, as well. Uh, and I'm very grateful for everybody who put any sort of like work into bringing the country Latin America. And I'm very excited uh, about the growth and the energy uh that uh defcon and the whole community is especially like people travel uh to defcon to bogota from all around the world and now seeing all these like energies and different cultures at one spot uh, creating like a huge synergy of like um that connects like the technology the uh, ethereum itself connects us all together and now we are making something more like bigger and like connecting together and like thinking how to like help the ecosystem and how to like grow it even more and how to make it more decentralized um and especially um as latin american countries uh are, have troubles with their own like banking systems uh, and seeing blockchain help uh, with that uh, is very very useful and very cool. And I'm very grateful that even Ethereum Foundation or whoever else decided to host DEFCON in Bogota. And this is amazing venue and I'm very grateful to be a part of DEFCON as well. Yeah, you said earlier that Nick always has to travel 13 hours, but the sad truth is it's more like 30. And if I have to travel 30 hours to somewhere, uh, it's nice that it's somewhere new and interesting that I haven't been before where I can experience new cultures and stuff, uh, at least the time when I'm not at the conference center. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a really fun location to have it in and, and I've had a great time. I think the thing that stuck out the most to me about this conference so far is that not even the Ethereum app layer has too much focus here. Uh, we're beneath the app layer with a lot of the content and the talks here. That's layer twos, there's post-merge Ethereum, EIP 4844, dank sharding, uh, staking infrastructure, uh, like NFTs and DeFi don't really have too much uh, of a exposure here. Uh, and I think that's kind of emblematic of where we are in the Ethereum world. And what DevCon really is to Ethereum is it's this very deep in the stack conference 
uh, and I, I haven't been to any of the other DevCons before, but you know, I've heard stories. Like I've uh, listened to the other Epicenter post uh, DevCon episodes just to get the recap. And it seems to be that this DevCon uh, also seems to be emblematic of where Ethereum is at large, where early DevCons were small and chaotic and uh, you know, uh, a little bit of uh, needed some polishing. And so was Ethereum in those early days. And now we're at this DevCon where the city was, uh, while there were some concerns about danger, I don't really think anything, anything has actually happened. Uh, and I think if you just put on your common sense hat, you actually don't really uh, feel exposure to any danger in the city. And then uh, it's been the perfect intersection of the culture of Colombia, the culture of Bogota, uh, but also the very polished and well-crafted uh, conference center and organized event. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Vitalik said that post-merge Ethereum is like 50 to 60 percent done, uh, but also that we're good at shipping now. We're good at coordinating. The developers are coordinated. Uh, and it seems to be that that is also expressed in uh, DEF CON as well. Cool. Yeah, let's dig into the content. Uh, what, what has, uh, what, what have you, have you, uh, I mean, I assume most of you haven't gone to that many talks because there's tons of people here and basically you just kind of note which talks <clears throat> you want to catch up with later on YouTube. So uh, what, which kind of talks would that be for you? <clears throat> so for any listeners that have or haven't read some of these published books on the history of Ethereum, What's interesting about them is they tend to mark their timelines by going DevCon to DevCon. So, you know, it was DevCon 2, the DDoS attack is underway, you know, all the crazy things that kind of happen from one to another. We're in Prague, it's DevCon 4, all of the core developers call an emergency meeting on state rent where they come to believe that, you know, statelessness is no longer, uh, uh, or, or that the state bloat could become a huge issue in time and what should we do about it? Um, and there are things that came up here too that are quite interesting. You've got um, Carl did his presentation on something that I hadn't heard of previously, which was this whole uh, 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 sort of randomness ceremony that they're working on. Um, while we were here, one of the major uh, uh, organizations behind a, a layer two solution uh, 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 obtained a major client team. So that was kind of interesting. And I guess it, it's one of those things where I saw a tweet yesterday and it might have been yours. It might not have. It's a Walking the halls of DevCon is like being in crypto Twitter. And uh, 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 it's, it's there, you know, FCC is great. At Denver is great. Uh, there are all of the, the events that you know, the community organizes that are thousands of people are cool. But it's, it's interesting how it's, this event has some gravity around it. And it's fun to see. Um, I feel like um, this DevCon is way more like Proof of stake uh, has been a huge thing, especially as merch happened like a month ago. So now seeing like all these like post merge talks and like the technical talks, like how Ethereum can work in like post merge world or like how Ethereum can run even on like proof of stake and what kind of dApps we can like build on proof of stake and even like improvements on like uh, in like EVM ecosystem or like solidity improvements uh, or like a bunch of like ZK knowledge that's like whole new world that emerged recently i feel like the whole like zk um zk and the layer twos which has been like blowing off as well uh pretty much um and also just the fact of like how we are connecting that with whole like the cultural uh vibe as well as uh downstairs on like the bottom floor we have the community hubs which is kind of cool to see like a different communities as well taking a part uh and bringing like a different vibe to like the whole like developer nerdy kind of builder ish vibe um it's very cool to see uh, all that uh, emerging and like sort of like even like uh, you know putting like puz puzzling together and uh, creating this like whole new ecosystem um yeah I think, uh, you know, probably the, the talk I've seen that I like the most, which is, I guess, easy because I only saw one, but it is an excellent talk, is Eric Wall's talk about social coordination around slashing, censoring validators. And I think that sort of thing is going to be a really interesting conversation to have because, you know, we, we decide our social norms and the best time to decide the social norms is before the disaster happens, not while it's happening. You know, the, the reason the DAO was contentious is because we hadn't had that conversation beforehand of what will we do if something like this happened? 
Um, and so I think it's amazing that people are bringing up topics like this at DevCon so that we can really get that conversation kickstarted. Uh, what I'm looking forward to watching afterwards is all of the talks about base layer EVM improvements and you know components like ZK Snarks and, and stuff like that and how we can evolve the base layer to better support them because Ethereum ultimately survives by being the best infrastructure for a variety of applications rather than trying to build the applications in. Um, and then also just reading about some of the, listening to some of the projects that are being built on those sort of improvements. Uh, you know, so so Dark Forest is near and dear to my heart. I think it's an amazing game. I love that it's uh, not, you know, pay uh, pay to earn and or play to, you know, earn or whatnot. It's, it's just a game that's fun, legitimately good, and happens to be built in an entirely decentralized fashion. And I love seeing those sort of things evolving, like the non-financial cases on top of Ethereum and on top of new improvements we can build to the EVM and so forth. The talk that's now living rent-free in my brain is definitely uh, Carl Flores' talk about uh, Bedrock and the OP stack. And Carl Flores, first off, is a fantastic presenter. Uh, he's just exudes like this vitality and this energy and this optimism. And uh, the... Haha, <laughs> optimism. Um, and then uh, Bedrock is all about this, uh, what is like simply defined as like the ERC-20 standard, but for layer twos. Uh, and so as Ethereum has become more modular, uh, the layer two teams are also learning that layer twos also need to follow in Ethereum's first steps and also become modular as well. Uh, and so the OP stack and, and Bedrock is this infrastructure for, uh, you know, plugging in, in different parts of what makes a blockchain. So like, what do you want? You want an optimism fraud proof or do you want a, a ZK prover? Uh, where do you want your data? You want to put your data on the Ethereum layer one or you do want a Validium? But it's like the skeleton to produce any layer twos. Uh, but he connected it in the way that he presented it and the slides that whoever made those slides knows Carl Florsch at a very personal level because they know how he like presents and talks. Uh, and this, this story that he tell, tells where he talks about the first ideas of optimism to where we are now and how every single time like they all come together, they all realize that they don't know they don't know shit about what they were talking about six months ago. And they actually had to go back to the drawing board over and over and over again. And this is something that um, all layer two teams are doing and also how Ethereum has done. Uh, and, and so the, uh, the, just the, the evolution of optimism and the philosophy, I think of it, I think is really, really strong. Uh, especially as uh, uh, 2021 was the year of cross-chain bridge hacks. And what they're really building is uh, a system where, without bridges uh, and, a, and a single single shared network of many, many chains. And so that has lived it rent free in my brain. I just had a comment on this and I'll pass back to Federica. But um, this is one of the things that I think the Ethereum ecosystem does best, especially when they're all in one place, is they're allowed to throw stones at one another and at rapid speed. So whereas in a lot of other ecosystems, you end up with a bottleneck as there is somebody that is legitimately smart and doing legitimately good work, but we all wait to see on what the figure does next. In Ethereum world, you'll have, you know, Carl might disagree with Kelvin, might disagree with Proto, and that's just optimism. And then, you know, the whatever the off-chain labs does and now prismatic with them, that's just optimistic roll-ups. And then there's the Matter Labs team, Starkware folks, whatever Fuel is doing, and you've got the you know, three different uh, uh, ZK VM, you know, projects going at it with one another. The rapid iteration and constant competition yields the best results in a way that simple competing roadmaps can't. And it's a really cool feature, not a bug, of uh, 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 real decentralization. Yeah, absolutely. And that's totally also reflected in the booth space, right? So basically booths often they are just, you know, tables, you know, it's swag dealers, essentially, like, can I get a t-shirt in size M sort of thing. Um, but there were so many outstanding conversations at the booths. And I, maybe I'll pass to Nick first, because uh, Nick, you had like, uh, you, you had one of the most popular booths, people queued up for longer than an hour to actually uh, engage with you, right? Yeah, it's been it's been exciting. Uh, for for those who don't know, what we did is we we did this integration where uh, you can come to the booth. We recommended people pre-register because we know not everyone brings a wallet. Um, you prove your ENS name and you get this card that shows who you are visually, but you can scan it with any phone and get a PO app that says I met Nick at DevCon Six or you know whoever whoever you are. And then we also put together a leaderboard showing who has met the most people at DevCon Six. 
uh, and it's been wildly beyond our, our expectations popular. We got 2,000 cards and we were like, well, we'll use 1,000 for DevCon and we'll save 1,000 for the next event. No, day one, we went through like 1,100 cards. Day two, we used almost all the remaining ones. And by beginning of day three, we were out. Uh, and I've been blown away by, by how it's gone. But I think speaking more generally, I really love the DevCon 6 approach to booths, which is, you know, it, it, most conferences, being a sponsor buys you a booth. And then the booth is like shill zone central kind of thing, you know, whereas here the, the two are de decoupled and there's these booths and there's the, um, the, the other ones upstairs and they're rotating through the event. And it's a mixture of, you know, organizations like ours, you know, public goods of, of companies and of like, you know, grassroots projects. Um, and they're all bringing people in to talk about their projects. There's a lot of cross pollination. In some ways, the most valuable conversations we've had have been since we ran out of cards, because then we have more than 20 seconds to yeah. speak to each person before we have to move them on to get the next card out. Uh, it's been yeah, it's been really amazing. Yeah, Vitalik tweeted that uh, at the Vatican it's two popes per square mile, and at uh, at DevCon six it's two poaps per square meter. And I think this was just about right. So yeah, congrats on this uh, this super cool uh, way of engaging with the community and getting them to use stuff. Um, what about all of yours uh, booth experience? So I I I know that I mean. Uh, Usually, I mean, how did you select sponsors, right? I mean, so basically, it it's, it's, it it seemed incredibly curated. So, uh, you know, DevConnect taught us a lot of lessons, and um, the question when organizing that event was, what would it look like if you just called everybody to town to build with one another for a week? Because too often, uh, 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 the events are. Um, sensory overload and it's harder to be productive um, also the wrong groups can sometimes get featured so we decided to forego sponsors altogether this year there was there were two separate tracks one was impact hubs which is what nick did i'll walk through that in a second and the other was uh, um supporters where there is a swag zone and i'll explain why uh, we thought about foregoing this all together but the supporter track was fairly simple there's no real you know set of benefits you brand the room you get the vip stage you know after party for these people it was more of we just held a public goods round um so people could contribute toward um uh, uh, uh gitcoin clr fund eth columbia or um uh, uh uh it was a gitcoin round there was one other but uh protocol guild of course uh this is trends project and uh, those funds go directly toward a lot of the core developers um but uh, 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 we also wanted to keep the venue clean. <laughs> so um, the folks that were aligned and that participated um, have a smaller space upstairs in which they can give away the swag, but it's not the same as the impact booths. This way, at least, you know, we're, 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 we've all been able to kind of like pass through without kind of floors and piles of t-shirts. The impact hubs are, this is where you specifically go. This is the big area. Meet the layer two teams, meet the client teams, meet the ecosystem leaders. Meet the Solidity team, Ethereum.org, the people doing the educating, meet the grants folks. And it's meant to be an impact space and not just a shill space. I like the idea of a dedicated, you know, shill space on occasion because we all like to walk away with bags and bags of things. But um, it shouldn't just be pay for play. And we try to reflect some of that. Oh, actually, um, it's another mine has a booth as well. Uh, and this is my first time on a conference where actually I'm uh, there with a company that has a booth. Uh, and it's been an amazing experience for me as we are in the Impact Hub uh, as well, um, which is amazing to like see all the projects and all the like, um, yeah, like layers, uh, whether that's like, um, you know, Ethereum, um, Ethereum core uh, protocol layers and all these like um, uh, companies that are key infrastructure projects that are supporting the ethereum itself to be on like one floor and where you can like you are able to like even like sort of like uh, collaborate together or like you know as there were two companies that at some point merged to one and had like one booth together sort of uh and it's funny to like see this uh emerging uh but also um just like great to like see all the builders and like everybody to be focused on the impact hubs and on the core infrastructure projects um, rather than just focus on like a DeFi or like a, you know, or like commercial like projects. 
um, and it's it's great to like see that uh, mainly those impact hub uh, boots are like those like infrastructure projects uh, got the biggest um, like a light or biggest like highlight space where most of the people are hanging out and it's not only just to grab a swag but it's usually all these conversations that we had at the booth where were very impactful uh, and it was very educational and like people coming into us and asking us like how to run a, like a Nettermind client and like all these kind of technical questions which is very great uh, that we are able to support Defcon as well on behalf of Nethermind and like other projects. As well. Actually, you haven't had much time in the booth, so I didn't have much of a booth experience. If I could just interject one more thing, going back to the whole benefits of being in Colombia and, and events in different locations, day one, um, morning of day one, we had a couple of the security staff of the venue approach us and say, uh, the queue in front of your booth is too long. Uh, it's a, a fire hazard and, you know, it gets in the way. And we're like, no problem. We'll, we'll, you know, can we set a limit here? We'll put a sign up. We'll turn people away. They're like, great. Thank you. Morning of day three, they come back and I'm like, what is it? And they're like, where can we get one of those cards? <laughs> and we, we, uh, Kevin showed them how to set up an Ethereum wallet, like registered a couple of names for them and we printed the cards off and now they're walking around the venue with them. So, you know, local impact. <laughs> that is super sweet. Um, Let's talk about the future. So obviously this was DEF CON 6 and DEF CON has evolved a lot over the years. Can you leak some alpha about DEF CON 7? Because I heard Istanbul, is that correct? So interestingly, there's always a favorite couple of cities that are shilled hard online. We learned some lessons. Uh, 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 most of this is, is fairly public. Maybe this will also be alpha, but um, in the past, We've undergone searches where you pick the city before we picked a venue. Um, and that turned out very poorly when we then chose another city um, that, uh, uh, again, this has been referenced in a book, but with some incorrect details, but I won't call folks out here. But essentially, you know, then just before announcing this, when you find out uh, what a lot of people ended up criticizing in Osaka had to do with uh, distance of time from airport to venue or from venue to city. So then you pivot again, and that's kind of how we ended up with Prague but we had two selections beforehand. So a lot of folks like Istanbul, a lot of people have started talking about uh, 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 Vietnam. I've been shilled on places in Greece and in Belgrade. Usually the way it works is you've got to look at what you want to accomplish, whether it's impact work, you know, then there's venue avail availability and all the logistics that go into, you know, uh, 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 can women walk the street safely as, as safely as men can? Um, is the government uh, 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 friendly and able to help or is it, you know, a dictatorial space or something that might not reflect what we're looking at, you know, uh, what reflects the values of the Ethereum ecosystem? There's just a lot to consider. So the truth is TBD, but um, I think that uh, uh, I really enjoy the shilling personally <laughs> because it's just great to see, you, you get to like imagine the possibilities of it all. I mean, for a lot of people that might listen, you know, to podcasts like Epicenter, may also be in the uh, maker mafia of Buenos Aires. <laughs> and, you know, there was also, a, this was a, a thing when a lot of people had to go look at cities like this in Buenos Aires and then talk about why and what should the event be and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, by the way, they put on a great ETH LATAM last month too. But uh, yeah, I, I think it would start to shape up fairly quickly, but it's not there yet. So I don't have any spoilers for you. But a lot of people hear, you know, you hear that ringing from the Vietnam folks and from the ITU, the uh, 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 university uh, 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 club out of Istanbul as well. They, they make a lot of good noise. I hope it's, yeah. DevCon is for, for historical purposes tended to rotate eastward, but um, uh, past isn't necessarily present. Also, you've got the whole dev connecting in the mix. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Nick, one, one, one day we'll all come to New Zealand. It's like, just, just to see it. <laughs> Fantastic. So what in terms of size? So, I mean, um, the, these events, they've kind of reflecting the community. They've grown. And I mean, obviously demand has been much larger than actual space to accommodate attendees. Where do you think we're headed? I would actually pass this question along to, you know, David knows the community better than most. I would pass it along to Nick, who interacts with a lot of DAP users. And that as well, you've been a community person for a long time. Um, 
one of the first things that I said was, as an event grows larger and larger and larger, it makes it a little bit more difficult to maintain its soul. And um, so I'm on a little bit of a listening tour. The, uh, you know, DevConnect was an experiment, but that form factor could potentially grow to any size because if you had a 50,000 person gathering in a town, people could very easily segment to one side of the street for newer users, to another for core research, to another for you know uh, 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 MEV things, and another for DeFi focus. Everybody gets a stage, everybody gets to talk eventually. DevCon's you know, very research conference-y in the, in the uh, they said on the main stage um, in the sense that you might have a 15, 20% approval rate for talks, you're bound to annoy some people, but then you're bound to have some you know, side events around the city to make up for it, but not everybody can get to those things. So my question is, what would you guys like to see in a future DevCon? Should there be, should, should there be you know, multiple events? Should the community own some? Could it just keep growing to be you know, whatever venue size will hold 10,000 or 20,000 because we deserve our Olympic open, opening ceremony or our Super Bowl or our World Cup final? And it doesn't have to be distributed or would you like to see it distributed so on and so forth curious about your thoughts i think one of the reasons why this particular devcon is so magical is a little bit about the timing um recently post-merge ethereum uh, and so now we all feel like we're turning a page for ethereum uh, and so now we all kind of need to look around it's like hey what's what do we focus on next what's the new thing to focus on so this devcon is cool because just we just happened to go post-merge six weeks ago or however long it was the other serendipity here is that we're at the bottom of a bear market. Um, and so you don't really see any of, yeah, hopefully the bottom. Um, and that means that the right people are here uh, because you don't get any of the fluff that you get at the top. Uh, I would hate to see DevCon, the first DevCon after three years of, of COVID to be tainted by a bunch of people that are tourists that aren't here for the right reasons and are directing the conversation in ways that are unhelpful. Uh, and so this DevCon is, is magical because of that. Uh, and so for future DevCons, when it comes to size, uh, you know, I can't really predict what the markets will do, but I think all dev cons that are in bear markets are probably going to be more vibrant than the ones that are in bull markets, interestingly enough. Uh, however, uh, the whole idea about Ethereum is to scale out to the whole entire world. But the way that Ethereum does this is through modularity. Uh, and so as Ethereum gets bigger and as DevCon gets bigger, I think we do have to lean into a modular design structure for the conference. Um, there are going to, the, the Ethereum is going to produce ecosystems that People are going to care about one thing and not care about another thing. Uh, and so there are people like Phil Diane, who he's just going to only talk about MEV. Uh, and eventually MEV is going to be an entire industry. Uh, and that is also going to be the same for layer twos, because every layer two is also going to have its own network of chains on top of it. And that is going to produce entire industries. Uh, and I feel like I can say this on behalf of the entire Ethereum ecosystem, but we feel like we're on the cusp with so many technologies really hitting their maturity. And that's going to produce an industry for every single cohort, every single sector of Ethereum. Uh, and so I think the, the question is like, not how do we not have a monolithic DevCon where we scale out at to 20,000 people and we lose its soul, but how do we have compartmentalized DevCons where they're all like, they're all at the same time, they're all in the same city, uh, but they're more modular and specialized in different areas. Uh, and so uh, we have like the MEV, the layer twos, the proof of stake uh, and we get to be more precise about every single part, uh, but we also get to have the large, large conference that Ethereum deserves. Well, we may even see Phil Diane host its own DevCon soon. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, um, on behalf of Ethereum Magicians, we hosted the event at uh, DevConnect, which was very cool. Um, and I feel like that was great uh, as there was like one central way uh, where everybody could connect, uh, which was the co-working space, and then it was like scattered all around the city. Uh, but I feel like even hearing from people, I feel like they were like, oh, but we are like confused. But also um, it was great uh, on another side as there was many venues and many different communities. As for me, DevConnect felt like everybody, like every single community has its own like a hub in a certain in a, like a part of the city itself where all the like different communities uh, like vibe together um, and sort of like connect together. And then like, you know, you can like go to like one part of the city and have like a public goods. Then you can go to like another part of the city and have like, let's say the MEV talks, then go to another city, have like the modular blockchain kind of conference and like even like give a space to like different blockchain communities. And then you can go to like another part and then you can have like the core development. 
uh, and then like everybody connects in the center, the her heart of the center uh, at the co-working space. But for DevCons, um, I mean, it was great ex- experience experiment with the uh, DevConnect uh, that way. But how we are going to scale the DevCon itself? Um, honestly, I am I don't know. But I enjoy that DevCon itself is like a developer focused conference, and that it's very niche in a sense that we are trying to b- like focus on like impact, like how, uh, like which country we should bring DevCon to where we can like teach people more about DevCon or like teach m- people more about like blockchains and like about Ethereum and how Ethereum can have a real impact on like the country itself or like the the humanity even in the country itself. And I would personally even love to see DEFCON in like countries like, um, I don't know, like Africa, in like a middle of Africa, why not? Um, as especially I attended yesterday a call, um, a talk uh, about public goods. Um, and there uh, were some people, um, um, I don't remember the name of the speaker, uh, but he was saying that they are basically bringing blockchain to farmers and helping like farmers uh, and setting up uh, the insurance for the farmers itself through DeFi uh, as their banks don't allow them like, um, you know, issue like any insurance on their like uh, farming yields or like the farmers itself, like, the, the farmer workers, not like farmers, like in DeFi uh, ecosystem. And I'm very excited to see like how DEFCON will scale in that way, uh, especially as DEFCON are bringing together like very unique community and very unique vibe uh, and sort of like decentralizing itself, but in a sense, it's still being like centralized at this one location. And I really love the idea, like how we are all decentralized, like everybody like working on Ethereum is basically all around the world. Uh, but then we like once a year, we connect in like one location, which is the DEF CON itself. Yeah, absolutely. And I would second that basically it's been a rotation of Europe, Asia and the Americas. Africa has been very notably left out, as has Oceania. But I mean, basically, you guys, you're small, right? So it's like small and far away. But um, but I mean, yeah, I think it's time to actually have a DEF CON somewhere in Africa. <laughs> yeah, Nick, final comment, because we kind of have to wrap up. Uh, I guess I'd just say, uh, first of all, I find hilarious the idea that a prerequisite for DevCon would be like a 50% drop in the Ether price. Yeah. So we'd just be waiting, waiting, you know. Um, but I think it's worth saying, like, also DevCon is uh, a prestige event. And as long as there's one DevCon, there's going to be a lot of people who want to come because they want to be at the DevCon. And if we do modularize, then we provide events for everybody and everybody can come to the, the one that suits them, not just to the DevCon because they wanted to say they were at DevCon. Yeah, I hear that. I, I do actually like the the crypto Twitter analogy, kind of roaming the halls of DEF CON, like, these, like being on live crypto Twitter. And I think maybe we can have it. I mean, maybe maybe like in the, in the midterm future, this will be true. But I think for now, we can still have like these monolithic events with like satellite events around it. And uh, I hope uh, we see a, another fantastic edition next year. <laughs> Let's keep DEFCON DEFCON for now. Fantastic. Thank you guys for participating. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.